Good afternoon everyone out there in YouTube land. My name is Jared and this is my channel Mazda P3K. In this video we're just going to do a video about bleeding your brakes but with a twist. Somebody put an incompatible brake fluid in my 95 Mazda Miata and I am working on revving that. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so what's going on here is we are we have doing two quarts of brake fluid, so we ought to be able to flush it. Okay, that's good. So we have half a gallon, we're actually gonna need it. If you're looking at this fluid and going, you know, what in what in the Lord's name is going on here, you're right. Uh, back in 95, Miatas were supposed to use dot three brake fluid, which is essentially alcohol, the form of it. Um, if you look at the color here, this kind of dull red orange kind of looks like brown tea. You only get that color if you put dot five in there. Dot five is not alcohol based. It is silicone based. And it is not compatible with dot three. It is used in racing applications or in applications that you know are going to sit for a very long time because it doesn't absorb water. But it's not meant for dot three systems. There's a lot of disagreement on this point but there's a lot of discussion about it forming kind of gummy deposits wherever it tries to mix with dot three and it can't and that causing braking problems so what we're doing in this video is we're gonna get as much of the dot five out of the reservoir as we can and then we're going to bleed the rest out through the wheels and then we're going to stop pouring in dot three until we get the system completely flushed Okay, so went ahead, I got as much of the dot five out as I could with a fluid transfer pump, poured in some dot three here, and now we're gonna start just draining at each wheel until it drains clear. Dad, I just make um So what we have going on here, I've already we've got the vehicle up in the air, got the tire off, yep. and we need to crack this bleeder. The bleeder is an eight millimeter. I've got an eight millimeter flare wrench. Get it open. There it goes. It helps if I actually stay on it. <clears throat> oh, gee. Can you break it loose? Yeah, it's loose. Dripping? Not yet. There it goes. All right, we got some drips. I'm going to try to. Capture that in there. Because the idea is I'm trying to avoid making an enormous mess on my uh, driveway or my patio again. So anyway, uh, I'll probably get an assistant to help me with just do the pump method instead of gravity bleed. We're going to try to force this through the system. But I may just move the bucket. I don't know. We'll come up with something. But the point is, you want to keep moving fluid through here until you see almost clear dot three. So one thing to make sure of in this process is keep an eye on the fluid level of your reservoir here. If it drops too low, you introduce air to the system that you're just you have to purge out. In our case, we're trying to keep it a little bit on the low side because our goal here is a little bit different than normal. We are trying to get all the dot five out of the system. So um, we're trying to not dilute the dot five on the way out with a ton of dot three. But at the same time, you know, we do not want bubbles in the system. So if you're doing normal uh, brake bleeding operations, just top her off as you go until you've cleared all four wheels. Another thing is, is when you do this, you want to start with the wheel that's the furthest away from the master cylinder up there, which is why we've been working here at the rear right. Mm, yummy. Dot five. Mixed with dot three. And a little bit of ATF. Yum, yum, yum. So I actually have a bottle that I found when I bought this vehicle. This is what they put in. Dot five silicone base. And again, uh, it is long service life. It does not attract water. 
Um, it's really good for military applications, antique car applications, you know, something that is going to be put away for a long, long time. But anything that's a daily driver, you need to use DOT3. You need to use what the manufacturer called out for, what the government said is correct for this vehicle. So, otherwise you're in this boat where you're having to sit here. And we've been at this now for probably 10 to 15 minutes trying to get this stuff out. And we got to keep going until we're good. That's just kind of how it is. Because I want to make sure that these brakes don't fail on me because they've got the wrong fluid in them. Because not only did the, the guy who was servicing this vehicle before me, he... Uh, did this in the master and then he also filled the clutch master clutch cylinder with dot five and it's supposed to use dot three so that's going to be another fight for another day fortunately this has an external slave cylinder and an external bleeder that i can use to drain that but stick with the fluids that the manufacturer rep um, recommends guys otherwise bad stuff can happen one other thing, when you're using DOT3, it loves to eat paint, and it will eat it in a hurry. So, if you value your paint, if you need to, throw a towel across here, you know, so that you don't get Flex of DOT3 on it. Um, as you can see, the paint on this vehicle is shot, but still, have a little class. You know, uh, if DOT3 lands on the ground, not a big deal. It'll just evaporate, but uh, we continue. <coughs> Okay, so I kept going until I saw fluid that was basically clear coming out of the bleeder. And now I've got the tire back on. Now, if you own a Miata or you're thinking about owning one, the lug wells are really, really tiny. So you always have to get lug nuts that have flutes or whatever in them to sneak them in. So you get those in and torque value is about 85 foot-pounds. Uh, make sure you go around, make it firm, make it snug, life is good. And uh, then we move to the next furthest away wheel. So this is the farthest away, the rear passenger. So we're going to move to the rear driver. And then we're going to bleed it until it bleeds clear. And then we're going to move up to front passenger and we'll bleed it until it bleeds clear. And finally, the last one we bleed will be the driver's wheel. And then we bleed it until it bleeds clear. And after all is said and done, we come back up to our reservoir and we'll top it off with dot three. And then I'll probably take it for a quick drive, see how the brakes feel. And that'll be a wrap for this one. So we realized when we were doing some filling and we kicked up a giant wad of sediment that we really ought to get this thing as drained as we can and then come in with towels that are fairly lint free and uh, just soak up as much junk as we can so it can't get mixed back into solution. So my brother here, we're using shop towels, which aren't fully lint-free, but they're fairly lint-free. And he's got some basically gun cleaning Q-tips that are even pointed. See, pointy. And uh, just getting in there, getting the nooks and crannies. Again, if you're doing a standard brake bleed, you don't need to do this. Probably, unless your fluid got horrifically bad. But, because we are converting from dot five back to dot three, it's very important that we get up every little teeny weeny bit of residue that we can. So as you can see now, we've gotten pretty much all the sediment out, and we've also gotten almost all the fluid out. Now, one thing we did is we have not touched the brake pedal, and nor have we opened the bleeder since we did this. So in theory, no air has entered the line, because no air has entered the master brake cylinder. So if you wind up having to do something like this, just make sure you don't press a brake pedal, you don't crack a bleeder, until you put fluid back in the reservoir. All right, so if you've never done the two-man bleed method, because um, presumably you're here because you're trying to figure out how to bleed brakes. Oh, wow, that is totally thrashed. Anyway, squirrel. So 
you're going to open up the bleeder like so get it all the way open this one's a little bit sticky it's the first time it's been opened in a long time okay yeah that's very sticky there it goes so we got some fluid coming out which is good and then you're going to call out down and so then the other person's going to report back that their foot's on the floor so all the way down normally and then you need to close the bleeder because if they let their foot up with the bleeder open it's going to suck in air to your brake system which is a major no-no you don't want that so you close it and then you say up and that lets the person who's helping you in the driver's seat lets them know they can raise their foot off the brake, let the pedal come all the way back up, and then you just repeat the procedure. Get your bleeder open, which this one is a little bit stiff. I can't quite use my fingers on it. Down. Now you may not, camera may not have caught it because that came out quick. But the fluid is definitely dirty and tinged. It's probably a mix of dot three and dot five and dirt because I think this fluid hadn't been changed in a while. We're gonna keep going until it looks like we have water, almost water shooting out of here. It's gonna be clear. That's the aim. So you keep doing going until you see that because dot three, bleh, dot three, when it's brand spanking new and it hasn't absorbed anything, is almost perfectly clear. Well, all right, guys, uh, finished up the fluid conversion. I actually took it out for a test drive. The brakes feel nice and firm. I noticed that uh, the rotors are just about done. I'm going to have to replace those in the near future, but the brakes are good, and I'm feeling much more comfortable with the brake system in general. All that being said, that wraps up this episode. So if you liked what you saw, if it helped you, if it taught you something, please like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Do all the fun YouTube stuff. Also, if you got something to say, leave a comment. I like to read them, I like to reply to them, and I like to learn from them. And remember guys, I make the mistakes so you don't have to. I'll see you guys next time.